Everybody's looking real good. It is good to be in the house of the Lord on this fabulous Sunday before Christmas and get our minds wrapped around and focused on what it's all about. I mean, anybody been just laying around and not uh, doing Christmas shopping and putting up trees and decorations and cooking and getting ready? No, I bet you nobody's been doing that. So, you know, so, so, Sunday morning before Christmas is a good time just to get in your seat and think and just kind of slow down. Good to be here. Uh, announcements, Christmas Eve program and Advent at 6.30. And you know when that's going to be? Christmas Eve. <laughs> Watch me out. They didn't put a date there. That's the 24th, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Okay, they're trying to trip me up here. Uh, let's see. What else is in there? Men's breakfast won't be for another two weeks, and then it'll be three weeks that we have church breakfast, so keep that in mind, it'll make a bulletin appearance. Last week, we said we were going to uh, give some meals to the Compassion Center, and we did that, and I don't know how many people have considered the uh, share the light for the Methodist family home, but uh, I think just in case something uh, might have dropped by the way, anybody think there's a reason we shouldn't at least do what we did for the, uh, are you, are you, you just waving to me, Carolyn? Okay. <laughs> Hi. Just uh, thinking that maybe we ought to do the same for these folks that we did for the Compassion Center. Anybody got any grief with that? No? Everybody say aye or amen? Amen. All right. Then we will consider that done. Any other announcements this morning? No other announcements this morning? Birthdays, perhaps? <laughs> Number 276 in your highway. And we're going to sing the first and the last verse because that's the only one I know. Ask it either in the depth 
or in the height above. But Ahara said, I will not ask, nor will I test the Lord. Then he said, Hear now, O house of David, is it a small thing for you to weary men, but will you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a son. Behold, the virgins that shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call him his name Emmanuel. Curds and honey he shall eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and to choose the good, the land that you dread will be forsaken by both her feet. And now we light the uh, candle of peace. This morning, we are going to have a devotion about the scripture. And the scripture reminds us that God indeed is with us, even in this day and age when fear runs amok. We have no need to fear, for a small child has proven to us that God is with us and that God is faithful to his promises. When our faith is weak, but our fear is strong, God steps in without us being, without us even asking for it. God tells us, I am with you. Hope is coming. The enemy that you fear is nothing compared to the promise that God has made with, your, with us. The birth of this child in Isaiah's prophecy would signal God's victory for the people. Just as our Emmanuel, Jesus Christ, is God with us and our sign of victory. Now let's have a prayer. Father, you have gathered your people today so that we may worship and receive all of your praise and your offering of knowledge that we will be delivered today. And we pray that we may learn to fear you all the days that we live on the earth and that we may also teach our children of your grace and glory. Amen. Amen. With light of the candle of peace, this song is sitting up here on the piano top here, so we're going to sing this.
Excuse me. Well, it's Christmas time. We made it through. That's, it's bad that it gets like that. We struggle to get everything done. And if you haven't got it done now, this is usually when the men start shopping. About now is when we start. <laughs> I worked in the mall for a few years as a kid. And I would wait till Christmas Eve to go shopping. So that's a man thing. It's like a hunt. It's like, you know, it's, it's a rare, you gotta find that gift, you know. Anyway, it's a praise to be here this morning, and, and I hope we do understand the reason we're here. You know, that a lot of people choose not to come to church during the holidays, but man, there's no better reason than Jesus. He is the reason for the season. And what an amazing thing to think about that God would let a child represent him on planet Earth, send him out of heaven, the most beautiful, perfect place. And, sitting down here to walk with us and be with us and, and just to suffer and, and live like us. I, what an amazing thing that he would do that for us. But any praises we got this morning? Anybody want to share anything? I know you got your van fixed. Or close. Yeah, or close, so that's good. There. Yes. Praise to see Danny. Thank yep. Danny, good to see you. Usually I'm expecting you to sing when I see you, so <laughs> anybody else got a praise this morning? I'm, and it's a praise, guys, just to be in, in our church and have a church family. It really is. Uh, prayer concerns? We probably got some. Anybody? Yes. We kind of know, but we don't know. Back surgery, we had surgery for on the window back right now. Praying for the folks. All right, put Casey on our prayer list. Yes. I'm having surgery in the morning on my rotator. You're falling apart. I'm just saying this out loud. Daddy's wife, Linda, has had surgery this week. Okay, we got a lot. Of, okay, so we got three people possibly. What else? Yes? There's um, one picture that's on the board, and I had a Christian straight here, a Christian blessing, a blessing warrior, and she read the fact that when she had childhood cancer, he was diagnosed this year. And he is now going to Cincinnati Children's Hospital and had surgery on Monday. So far, everything's going well, but it's just a fine time to a little guy that's not quite three years old in his parents' disease. And taking so much to be with him with us and go away. My, my, my mom's had a lot of anxiety and leading to frustration that leads to anger, and it's, uh, she, she just needs prayer. Amen. All right. Anybody else this morning? Yes. <coughs> my mom wanted me to uh, take, uh, Janet's having surgery the day after Christmas. Home. Okay, good grief. I'm both going to be fixed this week. All right. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Uh, someone of uh, my friend Shanna knew in school uh, went missing on Tuesday, I believe, and she still hasn't been found. Oh. No. Her name is Viridiana, and I'm just praying she shows up safe. Amen. Help me. All of you young ones, I'm going to say that when you're here. Do not trust anybody on the internet. They misrepresent themselves and and it's just not good. So don't ever do that. Don't ever go to something like that alone. Don't just don't don't do it. It's just not smart. Um, for Lord, for all of those, Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray. Lord and Father, I guess this week we we need your help with surgery. We need you to guide the physicians and and just Help them to be successful in all these surgeries with all these folks that we know. Help, help Casey with her back. Help the oh boy that was having cancer treatment. Help everybody, Lord, that at this time of year is a bad time to be down. We know, Lord, the holidays are tough because we have, we've lost loved ones this year. We've lost friends this year. Um, there's some that we haven't had in Christmas for years, but we still remember them, Lord. And we just ask you, Lord, to help us to remember the good times and remember all that they influenced our lives. Lord, bless us as this little church as we go into next year. We are truly blessed to be here. We're truly blessed to be able to serve you, Lord. And I just ask you that you help us to, to guide and lead like we need to, Lord. Uh, just pause for a moment to think about the light of Christ. That's why we're here, Lord. It's that beautiful light that came in the form of a babe. Lord, help us to live and, and understand just what was given for us. The greatest gift of all, Jesus Christ. And now let us say together the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Two seventy seven.
y'all have uh, y'all have any school books at home? No. Yes. No. Yes. Yeah. Hey. What? No. If y'all make up your mind, you got school books. Oh, you don't know. All right. Hey. If you had school books, if, what if you had a school book where when you sat down to do a lesson, you opened it up and a Hershey bar popped out? Would that be would that be a good thing? Yes. What, what if when you turned the page again, it popped out ice cream and cookies? Yes. Would that be almost like great? Yes. And what if the next time you turned the page, it popped out a puppy dog to lick you? Yes. That, yes. That, yes. That, yes. That, hey, you know what? What if you turned the page and it popped out a unicorn? You know, would that be perfect? Oh, oh, I'm thinking that would be perfect. But, but, but you know what the perfect gift is? No. It would be Jesus. And it says in James 1.15, 1.17, every good thing and every perfect thing comes from God the Father of light. And you know what? Y'all are pretty darn special. And Jesus, who is the most perfect gift of all, came from God the Father because he loves it so much. And nothing you get under the tree will ever match that. Let's have a prayer. Dear God, Dear God. thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you. You're a great God. Amen. And y'all are great kids. Puppy dogs are great. Aren't they? Uh -oh. Our scripture today is pretty short. I mean, I'll get the rest of it in a minute. But. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Let's just go ahead and pray first. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, and we thank you for your son, who came despite any reason that he should have, Lord, he came anyway. Lord, just we thank you for Christmas, we thank you for the, the promise of Christmas. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, those scriptures have come from Isaiah 9. And I'm going to, I was going to go back a little bit before that. If you, if you happen to get a chance and read uh, chapter 8 of Isaiah, it leads into the story. Of the, of the prediction of Christ. This happened 700 years before Christ was born. And it tells in great detail about who Christ was and what he would be like and where he would be born and all those kinds of things. It's interesting that there was 300 years there that we have the Old Testament and then there's 400 years that the, that the, the Bible was silent. The dark period between the Old Testament and the New Testament. So one thing about God is, when things go dark, at some point, He's going to send the light into that situation. And His timing is absolutely perfect. When, when I think about Christ and, and, and His birth, and you know, there's a lot of people in the world today that want to deny the Bible, deny who Christ is, deny Scripture. But it's so funny to me because, what is today's date? Somebody give me the date. December 22nd. 2019. If you backed up about 100 years, they would have said the year of our Lord, December 22nd, I guess it would have been 1919. We, don't, we wouldn't have a calendar. We, we, don't, we wouldn't know where we were in time if it were not for the birth of Jesus Christ. Do you understand? People don't even get that. They don't even understand that time as we understand it is all based around the birth of a child. You have BC, and they don't like to say it this way anymore, before Christ, and you have AD, and after death. And I know that's a little bit of a misnomer, but that was the easiest way as a kid for us to remember it. But we forget that all things are in his time and his plan. And, and, and I, I really struggle with that one because a whole generations of kids are being raised now that don't understand just the most basic thing that a date, the dates that we look at are all based on when Jesus Christ was born. That, that's, that's huge. And if you could ever make that connection, make them understand just how important it was that the whole world took on this calendar. Do you think about that? The whole world runs off this calendar, but they don't understand where it came from. 
It's just, that's just mind-boggling to me. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into our story a little bit. But the, the, greatest, the greatest gift, of course, is Jesus Christ. And if you think about it, I'll just, I'll just do this with you for a minute. For God so loved the world that he... For God so loved the world that he gave. It was a gift, right? It was a gift. What does this scripture say? For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. It's, it's a two-part scripture. It's talking about the Son of God being given to every one of us as a gift. A gift. He was given to us. Tie that straight to John 3.16. He gave his only begotten, begotten Son. What's interesting is this. He gave us a son. He was born before us, but he gave us a son. And, and, and really, I think about the fact that the child part talks about that he became a man. This is really explaining the man and the Son of God in the same verse. The whole world received a man, a child, a Christ child. But only know those who know Jesus Christ receive the Son of God. You see the difference? For God gave the whole world a child, but those who accept him receive the Son of God. And that is such an important, you know, we cannot talk about Jesus Christ and talk about the hope of him without not talking about the cross and where it was all headed and why he came. His whole purpose for being was to be there for us. I'm going to go to Isaiah chapter 9. Nevertheless, the gloom will not be upon her who is distressed. And when at first he lightly esteemed the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward more heavenly oppressed her by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, in the Galilee of the Gentiles. All of the things that happened in Christ's life of note happened in the region of Galilee. Even Paul was from Capernaum, which was kind of in the same area. So all of, all of those miracles, all those conversations, all those stories we read happened in the region of Galilee. And so when we talk about something that was predicting seven years before, what was going to happen with this? And then the next verse, those people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon the light has shined. You know, every time I hear the shadow of death, what do y'all think of? Exactly. I mean, it's just hard not to understand and think about God's picture. You know, they knew the 23rd Psalm, so when they read this, they would have thought, put the two together, that God is with us through every kind of trial. Now this next verse, verse 3, would be very difficult for Isaiah to understand from his point of view. He's standing there, the whole, they, they've turned their back on God as they seem to have done lots in the Old Testament. And he says, you have multiplied the nation and increased its joy. They rejoice before you according to the joy of the harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. That is talking about Christianity coming to this planet. The increase is us. The increase of peoples across the whole world is the Christian people. The people that God adopted through the birth of this son. It's interesting that a son created adoption for all of us. But so the, the great increase came from the light of Christ coming to the world. For you have broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. So this is a, obviously this points to what's going on in their world right there because they are under oppression as, they, as we speak. But this also talks about the oppression of sin for all of us. We broke the yoke of sin through Christ. We broke the oppression of our lives. We, we broke all the burdens and all the bonds that we had before because of Christ. And it says that as in the day of Midian, I'm going to jump over and share something real quick. You remember, you remember Gideon? We've, we've talked about Gideon twice with me because it just keeps coming back up. Well, the story of Midian that they're talking about is where, if you remember, Gideon is being oppressed, or the Israelites are being oppressed, and God is calling on Gideon to, to lead them. And you can go to Judges chapter 6 and 7 and read the story. But, but anyway, the, there is a, there's a point when they are greatly outnumbered, 
greatly, just great, I mean, just thousands upon thousands of the, of the enemy. And God gets them to put an army together, and they start off with, I think they had 10,000 to begin with. And God said, that's too many. You don't need that many. You know, it's like a tenth of what the other side has. And then God narrows it down, and finally you get down where there's 300. And those 300 go and they stand with jars of clay with torches in them and they take a trumpet and they and they make a huge racket in the middle of the night and they break the jars and the light shines and and then they all and then and of course the enemy basically defeats himself so when you read this scripture it's talking about how god defeats the enemy through you and through the light of christ living you and i'm going to i'm going to think about the fact that there was a light in a jar of clay that got broken open and it was shown to the world. We are jars of clay. That light is inside of us. And when that, when that light bursts forth, all of our oppressions, all of our problems, all of our things of the past are gone. It's history. And so that's, when they, that's why they bring this Midian. We look at that and we say, well, it was just a battle, no big deal. No, it was a miraculous battle. It was all God working through people and showing his power and his glory. That's why he took it from 10,000 down to 1,000 down to 300 so that he could show only can victory can come through trusting in me and having the light inside of me. So when we, when we think about the light, there's two sections of scripture that I really like to, to share with you just real quick. And one of mine I know is Robert's favorite, but I'm gonna go to this other one first. Is um, 2 Corinthians, 4 verses 6 and 7 for it is the god who commanded light to shine out of darkness who has shown in our hearts to give the light of knowledge and glory of god in the face of jesus christ <clears throat> but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of god and not of us <clears throat> i'm sorry about that we have these earthen vessels so you can see the story of Midian in that but then the one that we all know and understand and love is in 1st John verses 5 starting verse 5 and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it there was a man sent from God whose name was John this man came for a witness to bear witness to the light that all through him might believe he was not the light but was sent to bear witness to the light that, that was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world he was in the world, and the world was made through him. And that was made through him, the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to him, them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. You see, we are adopted. We are adopted by the Son. And the light of the world is on us. Go back to verse 5 of Isaiah, chapter 9. For every warrior Samuel from the noisy battle and garments rolled in blood will be used for burning and fuel of fire. Now we get to the important stuff. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order and establish it with judgment and justice for the, from that time forward, even forever, the zeal Lord of hosts will perform this. So I'm going to keep it short this morning. We got it. For unto us, do we deserve a gift like this? It's a perfect gift. It's the gift we all needed. We have a lot of wants in this world, but the unto us part of this, God didn't have to give us anything. He didn't have to rescue us. He didn't have to send a son. He didn't have to send the perfect light of the world to come to us. Fire, baby. But we struggle when we feel like we don't deserve gifts, don't we? And we definitely didn't deserve this one. I think about it all the time about the fact that 
that perfect light came to this world. I mean, it's, it's hard to fathom from our understanding Christ's coming looks like a failure. You have a 14-year-old unwed mother explaining to her husband how this happened. From the world point of view, that's horrible. You have the poor people who traveled far to go pay their taxes and they could barely get by. From the world point of view, that's failure. But all the while in heaven, they were rejoicing because the Son of God was born. He was on planet earth. He came and they knew why he came and they knew and they knew his purposes. And yet the world tried to kill that baby from the, from the moment it got here. He was on the run from the moment he was born. He had to be moved continuously for the first three years of his life because the devil wanted to undo God's plan. Remember how I told you our God's very intentional? All this happened for a reason. And you're not going to ruin God's plan. God always wins. You know, I think about that when, when you're struggling and when things are falling apart and, and nothing is going your way. God always wins. If you can put that in the back of your head, then there's something he's trying to teach you in that moment. There's something he's trying to show you. There's something he's trying to help you through. In that moment, he's trying to guide you in some way. He's trying to get you to reach out to him. You see, his plans are perfect. His timing is perfect. They waited 700 years for the light to show up that Isaiah talked about. And the idea that God would give his own son. You know, we, we're, we're in Western culture. And we are all about the cross in Western culture. I have no problem with that. But in Eastern culture, in the Eastern church... They're all about the birth because they cannot believe or even fathom that God would allow his son, to, his one and only, right? Begotten son to come to planet earth and live in our conditions. But you know what? Because of that, we have empathy. We have someone who knows how we feel, someone who knows everything that we've been through, someone who understands what temptation looks like, somebody who understands what pain feels like, someone who understands what, what just any kind of emotion you can imagine, Jesus Christ lived and, and died and felt every one of those. God knew that we needed that. It talks about him being a wonderful counselor. When you look that up in the, in the Greek, it's kind of a crazy term. It really means miraculous counselor. In other words, if you listen to his counsel, He'll do miraculous things in your life. Think about that for a minute. That God can do miraculous things in your life if you would listen to his counsel. If you would listen to what Christ tells you in your heart. You know, it talks about him being the eternal government. It talks about him being the... He, we're talking about a government that will never die. You know, we, we, we struggle, and particularly the early church struggled, with the idea that Jesus Christ didn't come to save the church in the sense of being a warrior. But at some point, he will return, and he will be the general commander-in-chief and all those kinds of things. He'll bring peace to the world, but he'll bring it on his terms. So we better be on his terms, not on our terms. Our whole world wants to take the Bible and, 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 and bend it to fit what's going on in the culture. They all think that Jesus would have been soft about the issues of today. I don't believe so. He wasn't soft when they did things in the church and the temple. He turned the money over and the tables over because they were making church into a racket. He wasn't soft with the Pharisees when they would bring their problems to him, trying to trick him into different things. He never was soft. He, he was a strong savior. He didn't have to do any of those things he did for us, but he did because he loved us. But the even more incredible is that God loved us enough to let his son go through that. As a matter of fact, it says in scripture that God had great joy when he suffered and died for us on the cross because he had purpose. He fulfilled God's purpose. We don't like that. We don't like the idea that a, that a man would have to die for me. I don't deserve that. 
But you know what? I'm so happy he did. And you should be too. As we think about this season and what in this next year, I've been blessed to be here for six years, believe it or not, um, and preach in a little small church. And you guys have allowed me to grow and do what I want, you know, do the things I'm trying to learn to do. We need to understand how each and every one of us is blessed. I mean, and there are so many things that we could do as a church and individually in our communities. And a lot of times it's just being available to people. It's nothing, you know, and in the story of what Christ did for us, if you take that to heart, then you understand why there's nothing you shouldn't be able to do for somebody else, right? I mean, there, there's just, God loves us enough to take his son. And I mean, I just, I still think about our view, the worldview of what happened that day when he was born. How pitiful, oh, look at this poor, pitiful baby born in the barn. And all of heaven is rejoicing. The angels are out in the field with the shepherds and they're just, the, all the skies lit up and they're just praising God and going on and on and the whole world's going, eh, poor kid born over in the stable. We need to have the right view of things. And that starts with the love of Jesus Christ and understanding how much he loves us. And, and you know, my message today is strictly about the light of the world came to us. Unto us, a child is given. Unto us, a son is born. I mean, that's, it is one of those, it, it's so critical that we understand this. All of scripture points to Jesus Christ. All of scripture points to Jesus Christ on the cross even. They said they would send a redeemer, a savior, someone to take us out of bondage. We, live, we know so many people today. I mean, we have a 54 people here this morning. On Christmas services, when I was, I don't know, when I was 15, I'll say, even a church this size would have 100 people in it because it was important. It was a priority. It makes me sad. It hurts my heart. But what makes me even more sad, there are so many people that we all know that don't even know the Christmas story. They have no idea. They know a little bit about Santa. They know a little bit about this child named Jesus in the manger. But they don't understand what it's all about. They don't get the fact that God sent his son to us. It makes it hard for somebody like me to talk to people who have zero knowledge of Christ. Zero knowledge of the Bible. We all grew up in a world where we all had some sort of training in that. So when you speak to someone, don't assume they understand who Jesus is. Don't assume they understand the most basic Christian beliefs. Look at them and think of them as a child who needs to be fed. Look at them thinking like you were teaching them English for the first time. You'll figure it out as you talk to them whether you, they really know Christ or not or know anything about him. But I, I, I'm learning, I'm getting better. Boy, I used to, I mean, we, and we speak in a lot of Christian terms that nobody understands. It's Christian speak, you know? There's, there's things that we say that, that church people know and nobody else knows. We've got to get out of that and learn to speak to people the right way. And I, and I hate that I'm, I'm finally so out of step with another generation that I feel like I'm just lost. I become my parents. <laughs> it is what it is. We all become our parents whether we want to or not. But... I want you to remember that child in that manger. He left heaven. He left the glory of everything and came down here and suffered and died and lived. And along the way, he performed many miracles. He healed a lot of people. He showed the whole world who God was in a man. And he also founded the church that we are part of today, which is the most important thing. He gave us a way to worship Him and to be in communion with Him. And that's what we're doing today. That's why we're here. We want to praise God and give Him all the glory because we don't have anything and we are nothing without Him. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Dear really, Father, we thank You for our time this morning. No great resounding speech about who You are. We know who You are. And we thank You for Your Son. I know that the idea of a baby in a manger is pretty far removed from what people could understand that a baby could rule the world someday. But that's just how you work, God. 
You work through the unlikely. You work through the, 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 the least of these is the ones you're going to take care of, Lord. You decided to come over 2,000 years ago. Thank you for that time. We understand the calendar because of you. 700 years before that, you said, Lord, you, you told Isaiah to tell us that he was coming. You let the people live in darkness for many years because of their sins and what they did wrong. But then when the time came and you were truly needed, you showed up. Not with chariots, not in the clouds, not a great entrance, just a baby born to a poor young teenage girl. But the whole world changed that day. So much so that we started a calendar. I'm so thankful you, Lord. I'm thankful what you did for me. And Lord, I just ask you as we go into 2020 that we would understand how much you love us. And remember not only the manger, but the cross. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's all stand there to 271. situations. You know, how we respond in the most difficult of times shows who we are in Jesus Christ better than any other sermon or book you could teach, tell somebody about. We need to live the light of Christ. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to thy Holy Ghost as it was is now